So I thought I'd start this talk by、uh, reminiscing over the stress-free days of primary school, back to the times of the good old Christmas nativity. I remember my class getting ready to perform a dance to "Reach" by S Club Seven. We were all dressed up as these cute little stars, and、um, I told one of my friends she looked really cute as a star. And then there was one of my other friends who got defensive and angrily asked me, while gesturing at my face, how I would feel if she called me a moldy star. Moldy star. So, because I had complimented my friend by calling her cute, I deserved to be associated with a toxin due to the colour of my skin. And I was eight years old when this happened. Our secondary school was a big change for me,、um, from a school of 56 pupils to one with over 1,500. A change from having lots of fun to working really hard, kind of.、Um, <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard of the game Bogies. It's from a show called Dick and Dom, and the aim of the game is to say bogies as loud as you can without being seen by anyone. Now imagine this game being played, but instead of the funny word being bogies, a couple of boys in my class use the word packy. Now I'm telling you about these experiences, not to victimise myself, but to make you aware of what people of colour. Experience and have to deal with as a common normality in our lives. One assumption that's often made in talks like this is, "Here we go again. It's another person of colour talking about racism." And I find this really puzzling because, with racism being such a prominent problem in our society, how are we meant to conquer it if it isn't talked about? See, racism in Britain. Can be very subtle, and that's why many people don't believe it exists to such a common extent. In actual fact, rather than it being much better than it was, it's actually just become a harder argument for racial minorities to make, because it's more deeply ingrained, and that makes it harder to challenge. The real victim of racism is society, because when someone is insulted because of the colour of their skin, they feel inferior. And so they're unlikely to contribute any of their ideas or speak out on any matters at all. And this demonstrates how overwhelmingly powerful negative language can be, and how insignificant it can make someone feel. Now, racism is painful, and it's psychologically damaging, because when someone is insulted because of the colour of their skin, they feel subordinate because of who they are. And we can all change our hair or. Change our clothes to try and fit in, but I can't change my skin colour because I was born this way. As an example, my granddad had to change his name, cut his hair, and remove his turban, the very essence of his identity, in order to avoid complete rejection from the UK. He couldn't do anything about assimilating his skin colour though, and he suffered because of that. Then you move on to the next generation, his daughter or my mum, told by one of her best friends in primary school that she could never be the lead role in the Wizard of Oz school production because her primary school would never cast a black Dorothy. Black Dorothy. My mum's dream of being the lead in the primary school production was crushed, and she was cast as the witch instead. Now, my mum is a woman of colour, married to a white man. 35 years later, often witnesses my dad getting approached by shop assistants in women's clothing shops, and they'll ask if he needs any help, while my mum is ignored. Why is that? Then there's one of my closest friends who justified a racist action by saying Zeta's not that brown anyway, so I didn't have the right to be offended. My sister, who feels alienated and uncomfortable because she's realised some of her friends often use racist language. My cousins put up with racism in school because people mean no harm. My grandma, who's had her accent made fun of and has now just accepted it. Now just think about that for a minute, because if something racist is said. 
And yes, jokes count too because they're not funny. Thing is with racism, is that when I hear a racist comment, I'll feel tears in my eyes because it rips through me. And as strong-willed as I can be, I will suddenly feel like nothing. I feel like I'll get judged if I speak out about it, and I don't want to look like a victim. So I'll reassure myself I didn't hear what I just thought I heard, but I did. And if any of you have felt targeted whilst I've been speaking, that feeling of alienation is a taste of how racism impacts me. Now, often people will say, "I'm not racist," but if this is true, then why does it still exist? I know it does. I've heard racist remarks recently, such as referring to Indians as infestations or using the word half-caste. And like many, I didn't speak up about it. This year, our TEDx theme is small change in racism is a big problem, but it can be tackled through something as simple as being aware that it exists and being conscious of the impact that it can have on someone. Through talking, we become more aware and accepting of people. Having brown skin should be something I can love about myself, not something that other people look down on or pity. Embrace differences in race and culture. Don't ignore it. And this can be done through the kind of language we all choose to use, because language is something we all can control, something we all can use for change, and something to help us to unite rather than divide. Yes, racism is painful, and it's psychologically damaging. But we can bring about a change through understanding more about the language we choose to use. Thank you.